When you're new to video content creation, your projects are typically pretty simple, usually consisting of no more than one or two audio tracks, and it's pretty easy to keep things under control. But as you gain more experience, your projects quickly become more complicated, sometimes containing dozens of different audio tracks you need to keep balanced. Plus, you need to constantly monitor your master output bus to ensure your levels aren't clipping. It can quickly become a nightmare. In this tutorial, you'll discover a simple technique for keeping your audio levels under control and distortion-free at all times. I'm David Power, and this is a DaVinci Resolve Power Tip. Today's technique is actually a multi-step process. The good news is, once you've done this a few times, the steps will become second nature, you'll unconsciously integrate them into your workflow, and it won't feel like a separate process you need to perform for every project. With that out of the way, let's dive right into step one, label your audio tracks. Now this may sound like housekeeping and it kind of is, but once you've got multiple tracks in a project, it can be difficult to keep everything straight. So I highly recommend giving each of them a name you can recognize. Let's click on the beamed musical notes icon to jump into the Fairlight tab. You can name your tracks by clicking on their labels, selecting the default name and typing a new one. I'm going to label my tracks Dialogue, Music, and SFX for my sound effects track. And when you've done that, let's move on to step two, adjust the volume of each individual track. Next, let's ensure each audio track has what I call a healthy volume and isn't clipping. I find it helpful here to switch on Resolve's full waveform view, which you can do here in the Timeline View Options menu. This makes it easier to eyeball the waveforms for peaks that reach the very top or very bottom of the clip boundaries. If your channel faders are not visible, click Mixer on the top menu to open the mixer pane. If your clip isn't too long, it's a good idea to play it from beginning to end and watch the track's meter closely. It also helps to solo the track so it's the only one you can hear. And you do that by clicking the box containing the S for solo here on the left. It turns green when solo is on. As a guideline, set your track volume so the meter spends most in of its time in West the green Philadelphia and yellow regions. And Going into the red zone every now and then is fine, provided your days. signal isn't clipping Chill out at out, zero decibels. In, cool. With the track all soloed, adjust the level outside. fader until you've got a healthy and signal that isn't clipping. No if it's good. a longer clip and you don't have time to listen to the entire thing end to end, you can visually identify the loudest peaks, place your playhead just before them on the timeline, and play back just those sections to ensure your levels are okay. When you're done with the track, don't forget to turn off the solo button, and then repeat this process for each track in your project. When you're done, let's move on to step three, adjust the relative volume of each track. In this step, we're going to adjust the balance or mix of the audio tracks so each one has a good volume level in relation to all the others in the project. This process begins by choosing a reference track. Now, if your video contains any form of dialogue, and that can be voiceover, talking head, or any other vocal performance, my advice is to use that track as your reference or starting point. What that means is we assume the dialogue track is at exactly the right volume and we'll only change the level of the other tracks in relation to it. We can always come back and raise or lower it later on, but we'll start by assuming its volume is fine. As a side note, it's always a good idea to add some subtle compression to your dialogue tracks. I've created a separate tutorial on dialogue compression, and I'll link to that in the card above and in the description below. So using my dialogue track as a reference, I'll begin by clicking the solo icon on both my dialogue track and my music track. So they're the only two I can hear. And I'll play them back. In West Philadelphia, born and raised, on the playground was where I spent Notice how the music is drowning out the voice. Out so I'll adjust the music level all downward. Cool. All shooting some b -ball out adjust it until you find a good balance. Next, I'll unsolo both tracks and play back all three tracks together. This time around, my focus is on the sound effects levels. I'll play back the sections containing the sound effects clips and adjust the SFX fader until I'm happy with the balance. 
As your project develops and you add or remove audio tracks, don't hesitate to revisit this step and make any additional level adjustments you feel are necessary. When you're happy with the balance, let's move on to step four, adjust the master volume. Now that we're happy with the mix, let's adjust the overall volume of the project. Now, as a side note, your goal in this step is to make your audio clear and easy for your audience to hear and understand. Adding volume can help us do that, but simply making it louder is not the end goal. To start, let's make sure none of our tracks are soloed or muted and play them back together. As we listen, I'll adjust the master bus fader a little higher so the main one meter is mostly in the green and yellow zones with only brief excursions into the red. Again here, red is not your enemy, clipping is your enemy. When a track or bus is clipping, you'll see a sticky red indicator at the very top of the meter. If your meter looks like this, your volume's too high. Now the question of the day is this. What if you're happy with the overall audio volume, but you still see a little clipping every now and then? Well, one solution is to lower the main one fader until they go away. And that's a perfectly legitimate way to get rid of clipping. The problem is at some point later, you might want to adjust the level of one of your existing tracks or add a new sound effect or add a dialogue track or add some other audio clip that results in a small amount of clipping on your master bus. Of course, you can always play back your audio and adjust the master bus fader over and over, but that quickly becomes tedious. What we ideally want is a way to handle infrequent one-off clipping without having to adjust the master fader every time we make a change. Well, thankfully, there's a tool we can use to do exactly that. Step five, add a limiter to your master bus. Let's start by setting our master bus fader back to zero decibels. You can get there quickly by double clicking on the fader handle. Next, locate the effects bin for your master one bus. Click the plus sign and choose Fairlight FX, then limiter. The limiter user interface will pop open in the center of your screen. Let's take a quick look at the controls. On the far left is the input meter. This gives us a visual representation of the signal volume entering the limiter. I'm gonna come back to the input section in just a minute. Here in the limit section, the threshold knob is what determines the maximum or loudest signal that will leave the limiter's outputs. With the limiter at zero, it basically has no effect on the input signal. It's the same as not having a limiter in place at all. I normally set my master bus limiter to minus two decibels. Other post-production experts will set it to minus one. Some will go as high as minus 0.1. The threshold value you set is going to depend on the format you're exporting to and whether or not you're required to meet a broadcast standard. I typically use minus two decibels as my baseline, but feel free to experiment with other values. Next to threshold is the release knob. This determines how quickly limiting stops after the input signal drops below the threshold level. Higher values can sound a little more natural when you're using a lower threshold value. But because we're using this limiter at the master bus level to catch one-off transient peaks, we want the limiting to stop quickly after it catches them. So we'll leave the release knob at its default value of one millisecond. To the right of the limit section are two meters. The reduction meter shows us the amount of gain reduction or volume limiting that's happening at any point in time. When the input signal is below the threshold level, the reduction meter will be dark. And as soon as the signal exceeds the threshold, the reduction meter will display a green bar starting at the top West and extending Philadelphia. downward to indicate the number of decibels it's knocking off the signal. And to the far right, there's the output meter. This shows us the level of the signal leaving the limiter plug-in. Now that we have a handle on these controls and meters, let's jump back to the input section. Just below the section label is a button called soft. With this switch off, anytime the input signal is above the threshold value, the limiter immediately clamps down hard on the signal and prevents the output from exceeding the threshold. When the soft switch is on, instead of waiting for the input signal to pass the threshold, the limiter will start reducing the input volume a little before it reaches the threshold, and at times it may even allow the output signal to exceed the threshold level by a small margin. In theory, soft mode will sound a little more natural than hard mode, 
But in reality, if you're not driving the limiter too hard, you probably won't hear a difference between hard and soft modes. Just know, if you're ever in a situation where you need to limit your output to a very specific value, make sure the soft switch is off. Below the soft switch is a level knob. This allows us to boost or cut the input signal to a desired level. There's no right or wrong input level. It depends completely on the volume of the signal entering the limiter and the amount of gain reduction you're aiming for. Now, like most plugins, it's easy to overdo limiting. If you boost the input too much or set your threshold value too low, West your Dale audio Delphia can end up sounding distorted. Raised. On the playground was where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing. And that's because you're essentially causing the signal to clip before it hits zero decibels. To me, this type of distortion sounds crunchy, but whatever you call it, it doesn't sound great. So my recommendation here is this. Locate the loudest section of your project's audio and loop through it several times. As you're playing it back, adjust the input level knob until the gain reduction meter is just barely shooting downwards. Aim to keep the meter above the minus three decibel mark at all times. If you set your limiter up this way, you'll create very little distortion and you won't have to worry about your output bus clipping because you're never allowing the signal to exceed minus two decibels. Once you've got that dialed in, your master limiter is good to go. As with any plugin, there's nothing you can break here, so don't hesitate to push these values around, listen closely to how they affect the signal, and find settings that work best for your situation. And that is all for today. If you have questions, let me know in the comments section, and if you find these tutorials valuable, you know what to do. Once again, I'm David Power, and I'll see you in the next Power Tip.